Good day, everybody. Today we're going to have a look at the recent offensive activities surrounding the now infamous Snake Island. So in this past uh, week or two, we've seen an increased ops tempo of Ukrainian strikes uh, on the island itself. And I just wanted to go through some of that uh, footage and uh, see exactly what uh, has been going on since this uh, is a fairly significant development uh, we're seeing on this front. So starting on the 30th of April, uh, the initial uh, TB2 Bayraktar strikes uh, commenced taking out the uh, air defenses that were emplaced on the island. So this consisted of a uh, Strela 10 unit, uh, some uh, support vehicles, and the pretty useless uh, ZU-23 uh, double-barrel anti-aircraft cannon. Uh, these strikes were followed up on the 2nd of May with uh, two strikes on uh, Raptor uh, patrol boats uh, in the vicinity of the island itself. And continuing on to the 7th of May, the potentially recently newly emplaced uh, TOR anti-aircraft uh, system was also destroyed, taking out uh, a Cerna-class uh, landing craft, which was delivering a further TOR unit. Uh, this same day, we also saw a strike by uh, two Su-27 uh, strike aircraft, uh, probably flying uh, south from the vicinity of, of Odessa. Uh, these, as you can see, uh, are coming in very low over the island, uh, popping flares as they do. Uh, potentially unsure of the uh, air defense capabilities left over on the island uh, due to the previous strikes. Uh, you can see their uh, bombing run. This is uh, going against the structures, uh, barracks that were left over on the island to deny the enemy any comforts of uh, occupation. Uh, you can also notice, uh, due to the low altitude of the bomb run, that they are using uh, delayed action bombs, probably equipped with uh, drogue chutes, just to make sure they don't uh, catch any shrapnel on their passes there. And uh, this strike destroyed uh, a fair amount, probably most of the uh, structures left over on the island. So the next day, on the 8th of May, we have the uh, interesting footage of a uh, Mi-8 helicopter uh, landing on the island and uh, deploying some troops. Now, as you can see from the posture uh, these guys uh, take on when exiting the helicopter, they really don't know what to expect. So obviously the previous day's strikes uh, knocked out uh, any and all communications that uh, the previous occupiers had. So uh, this is pretty much a reconnaissance and rescue team. Uh, was coming in uh, quite suspicious of the uh, potential uh, stuff they would find on the island, and uh, rightfully so, because uh, just a few moments later, uh, they caught a uh, MAM-L right into the rotor disc and uh, took out that chopper. Uh, on the same day again, we have uh, three further strikes on a uh, Raptor patrol boats, around the island, so the TB2 has been very prodigious in uh, taking out the Raptor class. Uh, as you can see in the footage, uh, these boats are oftentimes moving, they are maneuvering, uh, but this doesn't seem to present any uh, problem for the operators of the TB2 and the precision guided missiles. Uh, even in the footage, you can actually catch a glimpse of the uh, glide bomb just prior to impact, just uh, cruising right into the hull uh, of that patrol boat. Uh, so interestingly enough, uh, the count uh, comes up to uh, five uh, Raptor classes uh, in this action, and there are reportedly only uh, seven boats in the Black Sea, potentially one in the Caspian, and uh, 17 total built. Uh, the rest, I think, uh, being either in the Baltics or towards the Pacific. So uh, the, the Russian Navy is certainly running out of Raptor-class patrol boats in the Black Sea. Uh, continuing on, on the 9th of May, uh, we just see some uh, general movements uh, of uh, ships and, uh, you know, different uh, assets uh, operating 
uh, in the vicinity, nothing staging too far towards Snake Island. Uh, there is the possibility of a uh, uh, Dugan uh, landing craft uh, actually carrying a tour as a kind of a seaborne anti-aircraft platform, uh, trying to re-establish themselves on the island. Uh, next couple of days, on the 11th of May, we have a Cerna-class uh, landing craft uh, coming in to bring some uh, needed resupply. And interestingly enough, the uh, crane ship uh, SPK-46150 from the Black Sea Fleet uh, also appear at the island. Uh, presumably, the crane ship is there to dislodge the previously destroyed uh, Cerna class that could be uh, blocking the uh, dock uh, at the island. Now, interestingly enough, we have this very nicely annotated uh, uh, sort of status posture of the Black Sea fleets and many of its combatants. Uh, we supposedly see two Grigorovich class frigates, so the Makarov and the Essen seem to be still operational. Uh, we can see some landing craft moving uh, towards uh, uh, fairly northbound, but uh, could be doing some resupply either to Snake Island or uh, practicing uh, an amphibious run. Uh, the most important uh, element on this image is the uh, A-50 AWACS uh, that's been uh, sent down. I believe there were some... Uh, based in uh, Belarus and probably Crimea previously too, but uh, I think this is uh, the first times we can really confirm uh, a Russian AWACS uh, operating over the uh, western Black Sea. Uh, moving on further, on the 12th of May, we see uh, the addition of some units uh, on the island, uh, Panzer S1, uh, close in air defense and another tour have been emplaced on the island. Uh, it seems that uh, it's been reoccupied at this time by the Russians. Uh, in their uh, infinite wisdom, they've even carved out uh, their supposed uh, Zulu victory symbol there. Uh, and on the 13th of May, the crane ship and the uh, Cerna landing craft have already departed. So as you can see, that's quite a stack of uh, destroyed units and a fairly high cost to the Russian occupier. Now, uh, the question is, of course, how all this could have happened. Of course, the loss of the Moskva deleted a very important uh, air defense and surveillance asset in the Western Black Sea. Now, there is the uh, much lauded S-400 uh, located in uh, northeastern Crimea at uh, uh, Tsankoy uh, Air Base. Uh, this is supposed to have an impressive 400 kilometer range. Uh, note that Snake Island is about uh, 330 kilometers away from this position. But if we run some basic math and consider uh, line of sight limitations to radar, uh, we can figure out that the radar horizon for the S-400 in its location is about uh, 13 kilometers. Now, even if they uh, throw that on to the uh, 40 November 6 uh, tower and give it another 20 meters of uh, height, that really doesn't change the numbers drastically. So at uh, the range of Snake Island, 330 kilometers, uh, the shadow zone, or basically the blind zone of this radar, uh, starts anywhere below 6,000 uh, meters. So uh, the Ukrainians really do have uh, pretty much uh, free reign over that area. I mean, this uh, SU-27 strike you can see came in uh, very low, but they can uh, even operate at much higher and much more comfortable altitudes uh, out in that area without uh, coming into any danger of the S-400. Uh, now, the only capability it has to target uh, uh, aircraft at this extended range is via the uh, 40 and 6 uh, missile. This is uh, active radar guidance. It does have a semi-active radar guidance capability or uh, track via missile. Uh, so it's basically launched uh, towards an area where it flies to and then it uh, 
either does its own uh, surveillance target acquisition and uh, terminal homing with its onboard radar, or uh, as uh, track via missile, it uh, relays back the uh, ref radar reflections it sees off the target uh, via data link back to the uh, controller and the uh, command line of sight uh, corrective uh, maneuvers are then uh, computed at the ground site and then communicated back to the missile. Uh, these uh, 40N6s are fairly new uh, to the whole system, haven't been uh, much proven uh, in combat, of course, but uh, theoretically the capability is there, but of course with the island being uh, in the radar blind zone, the S-400 can't ever know when aircraft are there to be fired at. So this is also the reason the A-50 AWACS is uh, coming into operation uh, in this area to give that coverage uh, that is lacking. Now, curiously enough, uh, the two Grigorovich-class frigates, uh, Essen and Makarov, uh, they do have some fairly powerful radar uh, on them uh, for uh, surveillance. Uh, their engagement capabilities with the uh, Buk missiles are only about, uh, I guess, 30 to 70 kilometers range. But it does appear that uh, they are not operating close to Snake Island, not daring to uh, go into that area uh, by the uh, threat of uh, anti-ship missiles. And they are unable to provide the uh, defensive uh, umbrella to the assets on Snake Island, which are pretty much... Uh, shit out of luck trying to defend themselves with uh, short range, either Tors, Panziers, or uh, Strelas. So uh, that is pretty much our sort of tactical analysis of the situation. Now, the strategic question uh, for the future of Snake Island is what, do, uh, what does either party want to, to do? So for the Russians, maintaining control of the island uh, gives them some uh, supremacy in the Western Black Sea and allows them to keep uh, Odessa and Western Ukraine cut off from any shipping or economic activity. Uh, of course, for the Ukrainians, it's the uh, other side of the coin. Uh, apart from the uh, sovereignty aspect, uh, maintaining or reachieving control of Snake Island would possibly allow them to restart uh, any shipping uh, from Odessa. So as you've probably been hearing recently, uh, grain shortages and whatnot, uh, exports have been stopped since the beginning of the war and uh, things are slowly starting to uh, become dicey. Also prices uh, in the market shooting up. Now there was an initial hope that the uh, Indian uh, market would be able to uh, supply this uh, missing grain uh, thanks to some increased harvest. But uh, as of uh, today, uh, India has actually blocked all grain exports due to a uh, heat wave and uh, rising domestic prices. Uh, so uh, the situation we've been seeing in Sh uh, Sri Lanka these past few days are, uh, I think, just uh, uh, a glimpse uh, into our unfortunate future of things to come where, you know, food riots and uh, energy uh, price spikes are really going to wreak havoc, especially in developing countries and uh, cause much more uh, strife, unfortunately. So it would really be in uh, the whole world's interest for uh, Ukrainian shipping uh, or uh, food exports to be able to resume, at least out of Odessa. Uh, having Snake Island would facilitate that greatly. Uh, of course, the idea of potentially Romanian or uh, Bulgarian NATO escorts to any civilian shipping operating uh, from Odessa, possibly sailing down to the Danube estuary at uh, Sulina port, either for transloading uh, or uh, direct delivery there. Uh, that is at the moment still very much a pipe dream, but uh, potentially something uh, that would be possible if uh, Snake Island was uh, reoccupied by Ukraine uh, to deter the Russian fleet from uh, blockading uh, Odessa, pretty much. Uh, as far as to the Ukrainian capabilities of actually uh, getting boots on the ground and retaking the island, I figure that to be fairly slim. 
uh, just the logistics of supporting uh, the outpost, just as we see how vulnerable the Russians are, the Ukrainians would uh, be just as vulnerable. So without any uh, major support or uh, additional enablers, that really isn't a realistic proposition. Uh, one of the sort of concerns for Russian development on the island is the potential of the installation of either S-400 or any sort of uh, hardcore air defense system. Uh, also, this option I consider to be fairly unrealistic. Again, the logistics and the isolation of the island really make something like that difficult. And the Ukrainians have uh, proven time again that they are able to strike uh, with uh, TB2 uh, f with quite a lot of impunity, uh, especially with the uh, intelligence they are getting from NATO ISR. Uh, they should be able to strike any Russian uh, attempts to land any uh, sized hardware there. Uh, also, the uh, Russian transport capabilities of uh, dragging something as big as uh, S-400 or Buk even are quite limited. Uh, all they've been doing up until now has been via Serna landing craft, which uh, can just carry one main battle tank, so very limited in dimensions. Of course, they could uh, maybe drag a landing ship tank out there and deliver something more substantial, but uh, just setting up the uh, something like S-400 or even S-300 uh, requires, you know, multiple radar vehicles, the surveillance radar, the engagement radar, the uh, tells themselves. This isn't something you just drive off the boat and it's ready to go in five minutes. Uh, it would certainly require something like a week-long effort to get something like that operational, and it doesn't seem like the Russians have the capability to put up an impenetrable shield to enable such a deployment. So that's pretty much all I have for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am working on the uh, Orlan 10 analysis that should be coming out shortly. Uh, please stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.